Hello everyone, this is Mr. Sullivan. Uh, I want to expand a little bit on a conversation that Ms. Cardillo started the other day um, regarding radical form and exponential form and how to switch back and forth between the two. And our goal of this lesson is really um, that you guys will feel comfortable switching back and forth between radical and exponential form and be able to simplify uh, expressions uh, in either form. So just to remind you of a couple of properties, Ms. Cardillo showed you how to take an expression in radical form um, and to change it over to exponential form. Uh, don't forget that a square root by default uh, is the second root, and so the root index is a 2. And so we take the radicand, the number underneath the radical, that becomes our base in exponential form. Uh, its exponent goes in the numerator and the root index goes in the denominator. So the square root of 25 becomes 25 to the 1 half power. The third root of 27 becomes 27 to the 1 third power. Again, because the radicand becomes the base, the exponent goes in the numerator and the root index goes in the denominator. And similar, similarly, uh, the fourth root of 16 becomes 16 to the 1 fourth power. Now, let's say we're given some expressions in exponential form and we're asked to simplify them. We can always transfer those back into radical form. So number one, the 125 to the one-third power. I can rewrite that as the third root of 125 to the first or the third root of 125, which, of course, is 5. If we encounter something like 5 to the one-half times 5 to the one-half, we could always change that back again into radical form. So that's the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 which we know to be 5. Another thing that we can do, just uh, interesting enough, notice that these have the same base of 5, so we can keep the base and add the exponent, so that just becomes 5 to the first, or 5. That's one of our old algebra rules, um, algebra 1 rules that we learned. Uh, number 3, we can rewrite each of those in radical form, so that becomes the cube root of 10 times the cube root of 100. They are both the same, uh, have the same root index, so we can go ahead and multiply those and call that the cube root of 1,000, which is equal to 10. Okay, so um, if we need to, we can simplify an expression in exponential form by changing it back to radical form. Let's take a look at some other ideas. We have 25 to the 3 halves power. Now, you'll notice here that we've done out a very uh, complicated way to simplify this expression, splitting up 3 halves is 3 times 1 half, and then making that 25 to the third to the 1 half power, um, taking the square root of 25 to the third power, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, if we think of this in terms of radical form, we write this as the square root of 25, that whole quantity raised to the third power. Of course, the square root of 25 is 5, so this becomes 5 to the third, or 125. And you see that we can change um, into radical form and make that a much simpler um, way to simplify that expression. Okay, so here are the general rules. You can see written out if we have an expression, a base um, with a fractional exponent, that we can convert that to radical form as we discussed above. Um, now, what happens if the numerator is something other than uh, just a 1. Well, we can apply that exponent either inside the radical or outside. Um, it doesn't matter where we apply it, okay? They will be the same equivalent values, and sometimes it really depends upon your preference. Um, just understanding that in this first representation that we're going to be taking the root of a larger number, and sometimes that's more difficult for us. Sometimes it's easier to take the root, make that value smaller, and then go ahead and raise it to the power. Let's take a look at some examples here. So if we want to convert x to the 3 fifths into radical form, that will become the fifth root. I'm going to take the denominator. That becomes the root index of x, and I can represent that as x to the third power, or I could call that the fifth root of x, the whole quantity to the third power. Those are equivalent. Either one would be an acceptable form. Now take a look at number five. A couple things we noticed. Number one, negative exponent, but we know how to handle those thanks to Mr. McGivney. Uh, but the other piece is that that's a decimal. We want to change that first into a fractional exponent. So I'm going to rewrite this as y to the negative five halves power, which taking care of the negative exponents becomes one over y to the positive five halves. And now I can convert that into radical form. So that would be one over the square root of y to the fifth, or I can think of that as 1 over the square root of y, the whole quantity, to the fifth power. Okay, 
Now, what if it's in radical form and we want to convert it to exponential form? Well, the first thing I would do if there's no root index, make sure to fill that in. We under, it's understood that there's a 2, uh, that that's the square root. And so this would become a to the exponent goes in the numerator, root index goes in the denominator, so a to the 3 halves. Number 7, same deal, b to the 2 fifths. Exponent in the numerator, root index in the denominator. Okay, now let's take a look at simplifying some of these expressions. Now, one thing I did is I made a separate video involving the exponent chart. If your teacher shares that with you, you can use um, the exponent table uh, to simplify some of these. I showed you sometimes that's an easier way, but if you're, even, if you're not using the exponent table, how we go about doing this? Well, this is going to become the fifth root of negative 32 and I'm gonna raise that quantity to the third power. I'd rather take the root first before raising it to a power because I'm working with smaller numbers. So the fifth root of negative 32 is negative two. I'm gonna raise that quantity to the third power. And that gives me negative eight. Okay. Number two, again, I'm gonna change that into a fractional exponent. So that's gonna be four to the negative seven over two power which will become one over. Now, I'm not only gonna move it down to the denominator to make the exponent positive, but I'm also going to change it to radical form at the same time. So this will become the square root of four to the seventh power. So the square root of four is two, two to the seventh power is 128. So we get one over 128. Okay, next problem, we're gonna take the cube root of negative 27 and we're gonna raise that to the second power. So we'll raise that quantity to the second power. The cube root of negative 27 is negative three. When we square that quantity, we get positive nine, right? Because when you square a negative number, you get a positive number. So that's gonna equal positive nine. Okay, let's take a look at number four. So we can do one of two things. We can rewrite this as the square root of seven times the square root of seven which is seven. Or if you remember, we can, because they have the same base, we can keep the base and add the exponent. So it would become seven to the first or seven. Either way works. Number five, converting that over into radical form, we're going to get the cube root of five times the cube root of 25, which will give us the cube root of 125, which is five. Okay, now in number six, that exponent, the negative three-fourth, it applies to both uh, values inside the parentheses. So it's going, I'm going to end up with 16 to the negative three-fourths power. And y, now when I multiply a negative times a negative, I get a positive, so it'll just become y to the positive sixth. So this will become y to the sixth over the fourth root of 16, that quantity to the third power which will give us y to the sixth over the fourth root of 16 is two. So that'll be two to the third or y to the sixth over eight. Okay, I'm gonna have you try a couple here. Let's, uh, I'll do one of each with you and then have you try some on your own. Again, taking an expression in fractional exponent form and putting it in radical form, the denominator becomes the root index the numerator becomes the exponent. Again, that could be either be written inside the radical or outside. It, it doesn't matter, okay? On problem number 10, taking an expression um, in uh, radical form and changing it to exponential form. Just one thing here, anything without an exponent, I'd make sure to give it a one. Um, and anything that does not have a root index, we understand it's a two. So this becomes three to the one half x to the 3 halves. Okay, they each get a fractional exponent. Now I'm going to pause the video. You guys go ahead and finish up uh, 8, 9, 11, and 12, and then I'll join you in a sec. Okay, so take a look at the answers there. See how you did. Um, you certainly can ask any uh, questions that you may have of your teacher. Now let's take a look at some of these problems down below. Notice that these are going to mix up some of the um, some of the properties and some of the rules that we've been learning. Um, so we're going to make sure that we carefully apply all those rules. So number 13, we've got some, uh, we've got a fractional exponent. We've got a negative exponent. We also have the power to a power rule. So we're going to multiply those exponents. So when I multiply two thirds times negative three, I'm going to get X to the negative two power. Again, we don't like to leave, uh, expressions with negative exponents. So that'll become one over X squared. 
Number 14, that one third, that exponent applies to everything inside the parentheses. So this will become negative 27 to the one third x to the negative three. Now I am simultaneously going to change that into radical form. So that's the cube root of negative 27 over x to the third, and that will become negative 3 over x to the third. Okay, now number 15. Again, we've got some negative exponents, we've got some fractional exponents. I'm going to clean up inside the parentheses first before I go ahead and apply that fractional exponent. So the x to the negative 1 will come up to the numerator and be multiplied by x to the third. So that will give me x to the fourth. And that quantity is raised to the 1 fourth power. And now when we apply in the power to a power rule, we get x to the first, or x. Number 16, we're going to again apply that exponent of negative 6 to all the expressions inside the parentheses. We'll get x to the negative 6 over 2, or negative third. And we'll get y to the positive 12 thirds, or y to the fourth. And again, just cleaning up the negative exponent, we get y to the fourth over x to the third. Number 17, um, we have some fractional exponents, but we notice that the bases are the same, x. So the rule says that when we multiply expressions, uh, if the bases are the same, we can add their exponents. So this will become x to the, I'm going to get a common denominator here since I'm going to be adding. And so that will give me, when I multiply those two together, we keep the base, add the exponents. Oops. That's going to give me uh, x to the 7 fourteenths, which is x to the 1 half power. Okay. We could also represent that as the square root of x if we wanted to, right? All right, last one. Uh, we are going to, we've got some division here, so we have to subtract exponents again. So I want a common denominator, so I'm going to rewrite that as x to the 2 fourths. Um, I'm going to bring the y down and also look for a common denominator there. So I'm going to have the x to the 3 fourths. So I'm going to do y to the 3 sixths. That was y to the 1 half, but I'm getting a common denominator. And this will become, when I bring the y to the negative 1 third down, it'll come down as y to the 1 third or y to the 2 sixths. So I'm going to subtract exponents. So that will give me x to the negative one fourth over y to the, I'm adding exponents there, five sixths. And the last thing, I'm not going to keep the negative exponent, so this will be one over x to the one fourth y to the five sixths. Now, sometimes you, if you're savvy enough, you'll recognize that the exponent was larger in the denominator, and so you can skip this step. You can go right to um, subtracting the exponents, but keeping the result down in the denominator. And there we go. Okay, so you guys are going to practice some um, with your teacher um, and on your own, and um, good luck.